First of all, I'd like to say good evening to all of you joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your time, as well as, of course, your interest in sending your children to Discovery Bay International School. It is my genuine privilege to introduce you all to the secondary phase of DBIS. My colleagues and I appreciate that you all face an extremely important and challenging decision on where to send your child for August. This is part of the reason why I'd like to be very clear that we respect and value the trust that the many parents of our secondary students put in us as a school and also as individuals, and that every one of us is fully committed to doing all that we can to support every single child here to flourish. I hope that this evening will clearly demonstrate that for you, as well as provide you with a genuine insight into our unique school. And following on from what Sheila said, I warmly encourage you to ask as many questions as you have for the Q&A feature on Zoom. Naturally, one essential area for you all, and of course us at DBIS, is the student's academic success. We support every child here to achieve academic success, which can be clearly seen through our impressive examination results, which you can see on the school website, as well as the wide ranging university destinations around the world and the associated courses that our students take. Again, please do look at the website and look at the great locations that our students go to. At the same time, of course, we are very aware that secondary school is a period of significant change for children as they enter their adolescence. This is one of the many reasons that we are so committed to supporting the growth of the whole child. Therefore, they, are, they can successfully meet their current challenges and of course be prepared to make the most of all their future opportunities. When students start in year seven at DBIS, they follow a challenging and enjoyable inquiry-based curriculum with a wide breadth. This supports them to develop as creative thinkers and independent learners who are ready for their examination years. The curriculum is built on the solid foundations of learning the appropriate knowledge and associated skills to prepare them for the later stages of the education here at DBIS and beyond. In years 10 to 13, our students follow the English national curriculum and take the IGCSEs in year 11, and then go on to A-levels predominantly in the sixth form. We offer small class sizes throughout the whole of the secondary phase, which in part enables our highly skilled teachers to tailor our students' learning to the academic needs of every individual here. We are also really fortunate for our fantastic location which allows us to make the most of the amazing area of Discovery Bay, as well as, of course, our own excellent facilities, such as our modern and well-equipped science labs, the specialist music and technology suites we have, as well as the Globe Theatre. We also have, in addition to these, a 25-metre swimming pool, our own multi-purpose sports pitch, which supports the wide sports programme that we offer. In addition to this, the DBIS specialist black box theatre facility and our green room provide our students with a wide range of options to support the holistic development. Our students are all warmly encouraged to reach beyond the curriculum and develop skills and interests that will strengthen their abilities to positively address challenges, work collaboratively together and to be of service to others. I really hope that you enjoy our virtual conversation this evening and again encourage you to ask all the questions that you have. You will shortly be shown a video of a few of our incredible students. After that, our Head of Wellbeing, Jason Broderick, will talk to you a little bit about the importance that we place on developing the whole child and how we support wellbeing so effectively at DBIS. Thank you. Uh, what I like about year seven is the new subjects, the new teachers, and it feels like you're starting year one again, but just with more knowledge. What I like about what I like about year seven is that um, the subjects are a bit harder, but you do get used to them after a while. And I like that we have many more subjects, and I think it's 15 subjects in total. What I like about year seven is that we have more responsibility, and we are more independent, and we 
we are able to learn new things and explore new things. Um, year seven is different to year six because there's, first off, there's more subjects, different teachers, um, but you also have a lot more freedom because you have 10 minutes in between each class where you can uh, organize your locker, pack your bag, anything that you can get you ready for the next lesson. Year seven is different to year six by the amount of independence, like I said before, and we are able to try out new things and we are given more responsibility and we are treated more maturely, so we are trusted more with things. I think my favorite new subject is either French or design technology, because in design technology, um, you get to create stuff and it's really fun. And in French, I just really like learning new languages. My favorite new subject is Spanish and art because in Spanish, the Spanish teacher is really funny and like I can, I learn more in like a fun new way. And I like art because we do more things in secondary than we would in primary and we do like more media and stuff like that. I think that it's a good school because it, um, the teachers give lots of opportunities to the students and when you get to year uh, nine or 10, you get to choose which subjects that you prefer and you can learn more from. I think DBIS is a great school for DBIS students because we are trusted and we are helped and supported in a very great community and we are able to work with others and we are given challenges to overcome. Um, what, I would give, what advice I would give to a year six student transitioning into secondary is that like don't be scared. There's like if you need like help you can ask your tutor and you can also ask the teacher and yeah that's basically what I would give to a year six student. If there are a year six student about to transition into year seven I'd probably just give them a few main points that don't be scared, finish your homework on time, and just have fun. Welcome everybody and thank you for taking the time this evening to uh, come and learn a little bit about well-being and transition at DBI Secondary School. At DBI Secondary School, well-being intertwines throughout our day-to-day -day operations and our approach in our pedagogy as staff. For our young people in KS3 coming into year seven is such a, a significant time within their life. And as staff and as an approach, DBIS recognized this. Right from the beginning of the day in form time, our young people are intertwined throughout our process and our approach to well-being, forming a relationship as significant as a key member of staff, which is, as I mentioned, during form time. Of course, as many of our students mentioned throughout the videos, one part of coming into secondary school is that opportunity of freedom. But with freedom comes responsibility. And we are very aware of the skills that we develop throughout all of our lessons, but specifically throughout Learning for Life. Learning for Life is an offering that within secondary school definitely builds upon the skills that are not only required within academics, but within life beyond the classroom. All the skills that are taught throughout Learning for Life are age appropriate, and they discuss aspects of mental health and wellness. And in current times, mental health and wellness is a key development for all of us, regardless of age. I want to come back to understanding and being able to get across the message of how important well-being balances with our academic attitude as well. We understand that the balance is integral to the enjoyment of your child and of being a student at DBIS. And we feel that we fulfill this in many, many areas, not just academically, but also too within our offerings, extracurricular. And these are such leadership opportunities. And of course, as you would expect, sporting opportunities and opportunities within the wider field of some of their interests. I'd like to finish off my part before moving on to some more Q&A that at all times, continually as young people move throughout our DBIS, whether they enter in at year seven or later on throughout, that 
key relationships are one of the most important parts that we develop at DBIS, not only with our students, but of course, with our parent community as well. So I welcome you to our school and I look forward to meeting you all and being able to be part of this evening, uh, engaging with you and showing you our offerings. One question that we often get asked is, is the school selective or does it take students of all abilities? Simon, would you like to answer that? Yes, I'd be very happy to, Sheila. Um, to let you know, we're not a selective school. We're very much an inclusive school. We firmly believe that the strengths, the uniqueness of every child should be championed and celebrated. And please know that this supports all of our students here to achieve extremely well. And if you go on to our school website, you can see some of the excellent academic results that our students have achieved over recent years. And if you know the IGCSE, an A-level system well, you'll, you'll be able to see straight away that the, the top grades, the A star and the A uh, over the last few years at IGCSE, every single year for the last four years, you had over 50% of students getting those grades. And if you then follow that through into our A-levels, uh, we've got three years of students graduating and getting excellent grades, then going on to universities. But if you just look at our last two years grades, for example, Across those two years, about 50% of our students have got an A star and A grade. Uh, that's a really, really powerful, much more, much higher than the vast majority of schools in the UK and international schools around the world. And that's enabled them to go off to great universities as well. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the learning approach that is um, taken at DBIS? Of course. So we combine the rigor of the English national curriculum with a bespoke and inquiry-based curriculum that encourages students to become creative thinkers and problem solvers. Uh, this allows our students to be in a great place for the examination years in year 10 and 11 when they're doing the ITCSEs, and then further on into year 12 and 13, our sixth form, when they're taking predominantly A-levels and again, that's the example we talked about, the kind of great grades they get, which then open them up uh, for the different pathways they're interested in after school here. We do also offer BTEC Level 2, which is an equivalent qualification to the IGCSE, as well as BTEC Level 3, which is an equivalent qualification to the A level um, for students who are more suited to different approaches to learning. Jason, I've got a question for you. Um, does the school organise service opportunities for students? Throughout uh, DBIA secondary, students are very active in supporting various charities and causes. Uh, and this is through two formats, either fundraising for them throughout the year uh, related to different events or volunteering. You know, one recent example that I can think of is our secondary students uh, having a significant impact with an organization called Impact HK, funnily enough, raising 70,000 Hong Kong dollars to be able to support their outcomes. Our older students uh, were runner-ups in a, a recent Phobos here. Now, Phobos here is Federation of British International Schools of Asia and a race for good competition. Now, this is with uh, over, I believe, a hundred different schools throughout Southeast Asia. And we uh, we actually finished runners up, as I mentioned, just before Easter, which last year, which required us to support families in a Nepalese village. Now there was a, a, a huge amount of organization to go with that, but it was fundamental in being able to allow our, our students to have this opportunity to apply life skills into the real world. Uh, we also run the Our Week Without Wall trips and activities. Obviously, in current times, this has taken a different approach, but the service element of this is fundamental. We have, and I'll probably talk about this more so later as well, a student council, and the student council is a big, a, a fundamental part to the organization of these uh, various charities and causes and of course as we move through to different aspects and different extracurricular activities that are on offer and I would like to like uh, really highlight that at DBI secondary school the offerings within the greater field of ECA are, are, are fantastic in regards to the wide um, wide range that we do have. 
Jason, um, do you and mind that, if I just add a little comment on to that as well? Um, oh. there's a lot of the great things we do, and it we could talk for quite a long, long time, really, and not cover all of those things. But I just wanted to come back to one of the points that Jason mentioned about the race for good, which is a fantastic thing that happens for Phobosia. We've actually got two new groups of students who are going to enter into a new competition at the end of this month, going into next month, to support families uh, in Haiti uh, who obviously had very challenging times over the last few years. So our students really are actively involved in helping people who are struggling around the world in really creative ways that really develops their skills but actually makes a genuine impact on the ground to these people. Could you let us know where students go generally from when they graduate from DBIS? Of course. Um, well students normally go on to tertiary education, usually universities, with nearly all of our students being able to go on to their first choice university. So destinations in the past few years include top universities in the UK, United States of America, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Um, looking at our current year 13, just to give you some examples of where they're looking to go. Uh, we've got students who've got places, Ontario, Quebec, Trent University, York University in Canada, here in Hong Kong. We've got students with offers for Hong Kong Bishops University, HKUST in the United States, includes Elon University and Trinity College, and in the UK, University of Bristol, Lancaster University, the University of Liverpool, Loughborough University, the University of York, amongst others, of course. And we actually have scholarship offers um, from Toronto in Canada and also in Hong Kong at the highly regarded HKU, which I hope just gives you a real flavour of uh, the, the many opportunities that our students have um, when they're here, but also where they go on as well. Now, bearing in mind that We've only had a sixth form for five years. The fact that our students go off to such fantastic uh, universities all over the world, and you can again see these by looking at the school website, really shows the tailored support that we offer uh, with our university counselors and the, the tutors who they meet on a one-to-one -one basis on a regular occurrence to really help them drill down into what's the right course for them, what's the right country for them, and what's the right university for them. And we start talking to students from year nine to get them thinking about that we run seminars with our parents so you have that information so you can support your child uh, to make that decision and it may seem a long way away but um, i'm sure you know children do grow up quick don't they yeah. i've got another question for you um jason uh, does the school promote diversity and internationalism right um one of the things that we're really proud of at uh, DBIS is that we're part of a COAS, which is the Council of International Schools. And one of the domains is uh, based around globalization, international globalization. And part of that means that we need to provide evidence that diversity and difference and inter internationalism is intertwined throughout not only our curriculum but our pedagogy and all of our offerings so in regards to that question you know we're very proud to be a diverse and international school in fact we see it as one of our strengths we're an inclusive school so we embrace diversity difference and we see every student is a unique learner we see that the fact that we are international we are global is a key strength and it is something that will be a lasting effect on the approach to our students as they move beyond our walls you know and our community reflects this diversity and a global society is the key to part of what is dbis Another question we quite often get asked, Simon, is uh, what are our classroom facilities like? Do you want to take that question? Yeah, of course. Um, well, I've talked about the classroom spaces that we have at Discovery Bay International School. They have been specifically designed to encourage collaboration and creativity and are equipped with the latest audio visual technology. There are dedicated, specially equipped classrooms for music, design technology, computer science, media, media study, drama, art, and of course our state-of-the-art science labs as well. So there really are facilities that are here to help students to learn, to engage, to work with each other, and develop all those skills that be useful for them here, but also in the next stage of their life. And the sports facilities? 
Um, well, I did briefly mention that at the start as well, but we've got an all-weather sports pitch as well as a well-equipped gym, uh, outdoor sports courts, uh, sports courts even, uh, undercover multi-purpose area, uh, as well as we've got a heated 25-metre pool as well, uh, swimming pool that is. Um, but I think beyond that, and of course, all the things that we have in the school itself are key, but one of the great things for us is the location that we've got. We're right next to the hills, the mountains, we're next to the beaches, we're next to the forest. It gives us opportunities to also make the most of the surroundings we've got. I, I know we're not quite in normal circumstance at the moment, um, unfortunately, but only a few weeks ago, we were able to run our extracurricular activities pretty much as normal. And one of those things, for example, was we had our running group or not it's tuesday morning uh, a lot of our year seven eight nine and ten students would come in and they would just jo join at the start of the day at like 7 15 in the morning and they would go for a, a quite a long run around discovery base a group with four members of staff and then they'll come back um, and get changed and then go off to their normal lessons but a great way to start the day and that's really key to what we kind of offer the facilities we've got we make the most of the great location we have as well Right, I've got a question for you, Jason. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the opportunities for student leadership? You know, right throughout DBIS, uh, you know, whether that's down to early years through to secondary, student leadership is uh, uh, paramount. And paramount more so when we get to year seven. And what we do in regards to being able to show the importance of student leadership is we like to reflect on what you can work towards. And we have a student council and part of the student council, of course, is that there are head prefects in our year 13s. So we like to use them as role models for our young people to one day aspire to become. But we don't only offer leadership through traditional methods of student council or um, throughout house systems. We often encourage leadership to happen throughout everyday classroom life as well. So throughout our year groups, we like to have student representatives. So there will be representatives within each of the four form classes, sorry, three to four form classes <laughs> within the year seven. And these students are leaders that represent the voice of their peers. And as we know, student voice uh, adult voice, whatever voice is integral that it is heard. And our leadership um, structure at DBIS encourages this. Now, I mentioned that, of course, student house systems and student council, but we, we allow this to flow through to our sporting teams as well, celebrating our leaders in all formats and allowing our students to see that strengths can be seen throughout a, a vast and wide range of skills and abilities, but more so importantly, for our young people to work towards and aspire to lead their communities, to lead their people, and to be a voice for a, a collective group. So coming back to the original questions, plenty of opportunities for leadership at DBIS Secondary School, and it is something that we continue to build and wish to work towards excellence within challenge programs for gifted students. Could you tell us a bit about that? So at DBIS, we do have a, a gifted and talented program uh, that is active. And what I mean by active is that all of our staff are uh, continually uh, observing and uh, putting forward students and referring so that these students get an opportunity to be able to reach their potential. Now, you know, as I mentioned before, it's not just academics. Okay, academics is a key part of being at DBIS, of course, but gifted and talented in a range, whether it's being our arts and our drama, and arts also too uh, focuses around our music as well, but also too in our sporting abilities. Uh, we have fantastic opportunities for our young people to excel and we like to promote this and when they are recognized whether it be in year seven or it could be in year eight year nine year ten and so on then we will be actively encouraging them to work towards being able to present their strengths and talents to the world through our gifted and talented program um, another question simon is um, what subjects are studied and what qualifications are taken at the school Excellent question. Um, so if we just start to think about the first three years of the secondary phase of DBIS, so year seven, eight and nine, students deepen their knowledge of the core subjects of English, mathematics and science. 
all of the students also study uh, Mandarin, Chinese, and a second modern foreign language, either French or Spanish, it's their choice. Uh, other subjects studied include humanities, and the way we teach humanities it means it draws on uh, geography, history, business, media studies, religious education and psychology. Um, do you want to start that again? I'm sorry, I think you just temporarily went off on the, on the uh, Wi-Fi. Of course. of course. So uh, you get a second chance to hear this. I hope it's exciting the second time <laughs> as well. Um, so for our students in the first three years of the secondary phase, so that's years seven, eight and nine, uh, students are able to deepen their knowledge of the core subjects, of course, so about English, mathematics and science. But students also study Mandarin Chinese as well as a second modern foreign language, and they have a choice of either choosing French or Spanish. Um, we have study a, a wide range of other subjects. Uh, a key one of those is humanities. And the way that we teach humanities is that it draws on a range of other key subjects. So in our humanities program, it's built on geography, history, which you know, is very common, of course, but we also bring in business, media studies, religious education and psychology. And together we're looking at concepts that cover across those areas. We also have the creative arts in terms of drama, arts and music. Uh, we offer technology and by technology, I mean design and technology, as well as computer science, of course, there's some really important overlap between the two, but they are separate in their own ways. And students also, of course, have regular physical education lessons as well with our fantastic facilities. But of course, we try to make use of our location as well. Uh, Jason's talked a little bit about well-being as well, which of course is such an important area for us. Uh, we have our Learning for Life program, which a key part of that is the focus on the student well-being, as well as our discovery lessons. Now our discovery lessons, they give the students the opportunities to be engaged in inquiry-based learning um, by taking on projects. And they have a choice of the projects they want to work on. Um, they get to work either individually on twos or threes, uh, really getting a period of time where they're able to actively engage with something that's of a real interest to them, but allows them to be able to explore that. And then we give them opportunities to demonstrate their, their findings to their peers, usually in younger year groups, uh, but also to uh, their parents as well. Now, one of the key ones of those for us is we have a project with the year sevens when they start for the first term. So from August till about uh, December, uh, where they're working on that transition from year six into year seven, how uh, they've developed what they've learned. And the idea is they then feed that back to year six students here as well. So it really helps them to understand and reflect on what they've learned but of course pass on that really valuable knowledge to their peers a little bit further down in the primary school. Now, when students move into year 10, uh, it was great to hear some of our current year sevens earlier in that video. They talked about one of the things they already like about the secondary is or the range of subjects they've got, but also they can really hone down to the ones they're really, really passionate about when they move into year 10. Uh, and with that, at the end, well, through that process of year nine, they get to choose the subjects they want to take in year 10. So there's a wide range of GCSE subjects that we offer and they choose the ones that they want to take. Of course, they continue with English, maths and science they being such key subjects, but they have more flexibility about the areas they really want to focus on. They still continue their learning for life lessons, which is so important, and their physical education lessons as well. Now, we offer about 17, 18 subjects at IGCSE. Um, when students then get to year 11, uh, predominantly they move through into our sixth form, our A-level program here. And again, we've got about 16, 17, 18 subjects at A-level, or BTEC level three that they get to choose from. Um, and that you know, gives them a wide range of opportunities and relatively small classes, certainly compared to other British schools in Hong Kong. And that really allows us to be talked about the idea of giving individual tailored support to students throughout their GCSE and their A-level to really help them excel in their examination results, but also go on to those great universities or different pathways if they want. There are obviously an awful lot of questions about the school. I mean, other things, there's, there's practical questions, for example, um, does the school organise a bus service? Um, do you want to uh, elaborate a bit on that, Simon? Yes, we, we run a bus service um, 
which, which runs from Tung Chung, although to be honest, that predominantly is based for the primary students because uh, it is quite a simple journey. Uh, I always get them mixed up. I think it's the DB3R is the one that brings us from Tung Chung here. Um, it's one. It's it's one. one. The one. Uh, Number okay. one. I mixed up the Sunny Bay one, I apologise. But yeah, that, and that bus runs, I think, about five or six times every hour. Uh, so really easy to either come from Tung Chung uh, or if you're coming on the metro from uh, Sunny Bay, again, 15 minute journey. We've lost you again, Simon. We've just. Here he is. There he's back. back. Yep. 15 minute journey, you were saying. 15 Sorry. minute journey. I thought you'd tell me I could correct my answer about which bus to get. But um, <laughs> uh, the DB1 the DB, uh, one, uh, is the one that brings you from Tung Chung. The DB3R is the ones uh, from Sunny Bay. So if people are traveling, um, particularly from Kowloon side, uh, they'd come that way through and get the Sunny Bay bus. Both of those buses really stop just outside the school when it's a 30 second walk or so down to the school gates. Um, a number of students also come across by the ferry in the morning um, from Central. And again, I mean, it's a very short journey, walk up the hill or a very short bus journey uh, from uh, lots, of, lots of easy ways to get here, but we don't normally offer direct bus service for the secondary students. Thank you. Um, Another question we get often asked is assessment. Um, could you uh, get, explain a little bit about assessment in the secondary school to parents who might be interested? Of course, I mean, it, it takes uh, many, many areas into my assessment. Um, we, we look at a wide range of assessment tools and, and approaches when we're thinking about how we support our students. So of course, in all of the lessons that our teachers are teaching, they will be asking questions, they'll be looking at work, they'll be making sure they're really engaging to find out how, how students are making progress. Uh, we talk about kind of our formative assessment, um, but we also have more summative assessment, which is kind of the, those short tests, the longer tests that we offer, the homework that students do. Uh, and the, the teachers who are experts in these areas, of course, use the, those different types of assessments to be able to give feedback to the students to help them to be able to make progress. I'd actually talk about a related area I think is really important because it may be something that's very new uh, for you, depending on where your child's come from at this point in time. Um, we're very much focused on supporting students to take ownership of their own learning. And a key part of that is students set their own academic targets. So they, they have each of their subject areas with the support of their teacher and also from their tutor. They set themselves targets of what they're looking to achieve over the coming weeks and months and term. And then they get to meet with their teacher throughout the year to review, review reflect, where they're at and set new targets for them going forwards. And of course, one of the key bits of information for that is how well they're doing on the various assessments that they've got. Um, and then that helps them to set new targets and to work with their teacher and their tutor, uh, who they meet on a one-to-one -one basis approximately every two to three weeks to make sure that they're making the progress that they can. And one of the key reasons we do this is on the back of huge meta studies, which are based on millions and millions of students all over the world. This has been regarded as being either the first or the second most important way to support student progress. So it's absolutely key to what we do. Coming back to assessment a little bit more though, um, we, we have lots of uh, kind of big assessment when the students move up into the year 10, 11, 12, 13, of course. And that's important for us as well. We do have those kind of serious assessment points throughout the year for our sevens, eights and nines. But we also know the importance of that, the smaller tests that, that give us that information we can act on in very swiftly. But one of the things we do have for our seven, eights and nines is we do have towards the end of the academic year, in May particularly, May or very early June, is we have a big assessment period. And so over a period of a couple of weeks, our students in seven, eight and nine will take quite serious assessments. We're very supportive of them because we know that students can find that quite stressful. So we engage with them, we engage with the parent community around that time as well to make sure they understand that these are important, but they're not catastrophic if things don't go quite as well as the student would like, of course. Um, and that's a really important lesson for them to go through that experience, to be supported through that, because of course, when they move into the IGCSE years and the A-level as well in year 
uh, in terms of year 10, I was just saying, you know, we have mock examinations, key kind of practice exams for them in year 10, which build on all those kind of formative assessments, those summative assessments they've already had. But the key thing is obviously students being used to those things and not seeing them as something to be worried about, but to be a challenge that they need to embrace and be supported with. And that puts them in that great place where they're going to year 11 during that year and then of course at the end of year 11 to be able to be so successful in those external examinations that they take and of course that then helps them moving into year 12 and 13 when they move on to the a levels as well do you mind if i uh, come in there as well so I mean, as we mentioned right like as assessment is part of the picture of the whole child so we also have assessments in regards to like the social and emotional development of the child too. Now, these aren't so much in regards to summative assessments, but more so formative. And we do this through the form of um, our tutor time uh, drop-ins, where we have a specific time for each individual student in year seven to check in with their form tutor um, regularly throughout the school year, where they get an opportunity to talk about like the wider aspect of what's going on in their life you know, how they are coping, uh, what strategies that they're using to cope. And I think this is really important that Simon, when he mentioned that we do offer the opportunity to be uh, assessed and then not to just leave them with the result, mm -hmm. but to talk about the mental and psychological aspects, um, either based around how they have achieved well and how do we continue to keep achieving well and performing or maybe they haven't achieved as well as they wish they had or they thought they would you know what are the skills that are now required to be able to cope with that so that we don't hide away but yet we face our challenge and work through that adversity and you know and that's in a nutshell too part of our well-being at our school um how do we teach these skills that are transferable throughout their time that will assist them in regards to assessment? Because it's part of life, right? Being um, at times in our life, being put through um, snapshots that sort of assess where we're at and, and our ability to achieve and qualify. So um, I just wanted to add that into that we are always looking at that whole child. Thank you, Jason. I think that's a really important point to add. I think we're probably beginning to run towards the end of our webinar now. We've um, It's been going for 45 minutes. Uh, there are probably a whole lot of other questions. Um, is there anything from the attendees? You, is there anything that we haven't covered or you'd like to ask? Um, if you could just quickly type it into the Q&A um, now, um, Simon or um, Jason or Helen would be very happy to answer it, I'm sure. Um, I think, Sheila, I think as they are typing, one of the things that I, I really want to emphasize here and the beauty about being at DBIS Secondary School comes under the word relationships. It's an integral part of everything we do here. And it is an individualized relationship. You know, each cohort that comes through our year sevens, there will be key staff members that will know your child and that your child will feel that they can approach those staff members, you know, because it is a key transition time year seven they're entering into secondary school life they're entering into the beginning of their teenage years which leads into adult life and one thing that we need to ensure is not only are we being there to assist them and guide them in academics but we're being there to assist them and guide them to know how that they can thrive within their life that they can understand the importance of academics can lead them towards a prosperous life and whatever their definition of success is and this is something that i feel is integral to um, everything that is about the philosophy of what dbis is Mm, very good that's point, an excellent Jason. point. Can I just can I just add to that point, Jason? If that's okay, I think I think it's really important what he's talking about there. That students feel they have genuine relationships and people that they can reach out to, because of course there's always times when things aren't quite as positive as we'd like them to be. Actually, one of the things that uh, myself and the, the secondary SLT or senior leadership team do is we meet with two different year groups on a one-to-one -one basis, myself, the deputy head, the assistant head, we we'll actually sit down and have one-to-one -one conversations uh, with two year groups throughout the, the year and find out exactly how they feel, what they feel the strengths of the school are, where they're being supported, are there other things that we can do to support? I mean, there's lots of things I feel we are absolutely fantastic at, but of course, there's opportunities for us to grow. But one of the things we do also ask, it's really important to me, one of my most important questions in many ways is, I ask every single child, 
do you have at least one person in the school, a member of staff, whether that's your tutor, whether that's a manager of wellbeing in, in Jason Broderick, who's here as well, or somebody else such as their head of year that you are confident to go and have a conversation with if things aren't going quite well, as well as you want. And nearly every single person I've ever asked has given me at least one name, usually multiple people that they feel confident to go and reach out to. And I think that's such an important part of what we offer is the relationships that we have, the support that we have uh, free for all of the children here. You know, secondary school, many great things about it, but let's but not deny that there are, of course, challenges. It's where they're growing up. They're going through that adolescence. Uh, it's important that we're here to support them. Okay. Have... DBI students been admitted to Ivy League schools in the USA, which are the most esteemed, and also when they have to apply, if that's their aim. Um, my child is an all-rounder in, in year six. Before I make the decision to continue secondary, um, this is a very cru crucial factor. Um, so come, come back to that. So last year, one of our students went to Berkeley. Um, it's really important to remember that, you know, we are growing schools, so our sixth form is growing but already our students go to absolutely fantastic universities. I'd really encourage you to go and have a look at the school website, which shows the universities that our students are going to. They really do get uh, able to get into the Ivy League or the similar uh, universities in, in the UK and Europe. I mean, HKU is often regarded as actually harder to get into uh, than Ivy League University. We've got students got an incredibly good chance of going there this summer. So, we are here to support. In terms of your child being an all-rounder, to be honest, then we are the perfect school for your child. You know, we have the music, we have the sports, you know, we're involved in Phobicia competitions for those and our, our students usually outperform. We're also involved in competitions across the U sorry, across Hong Kong. Um, so there's a lots of things that we offer here that your, your daughter, I believe you said, uh, she would be able to engage with and really be able to learn uh, and improve. I mean, not that long ago, we had students excelling in a Phobicia um, gymnastics competition, for example. And, you know, a number of our year 12s and year 11 students at the moment, it's had to stop for the last few weeks, of course, but they've been actively working with students in year six, seven, eight and nine in gymnastics as well. So there's a lot of things that our students do here um, and a lot of support they get from staff, of course, but sometimes even more important from the older students who they look up to so much. Um, on that note, it might be worth um, joining the webinar on Thursday for years 12 and 13, where university destinations and applications will be discussed further yes yeah good point yeah. are there any more questions no no more okay so just reiterate though please do go and look at the website there's so many things on there there's really good videos you get to hear what the students think about the place and views around the school i mean we've got this fantastic library learning center uh, we've not talked about it at all there's many many things that to be honest, because of the time we've not talked about, but please do go and look. I think you'll find a lot of things that really excite you about the school. And do get in touch with us. Um, we're just an email away. Um, the general school email is dbis at dbis.edu.hk and it'll be forwarded to um, the relevant person who can get back to you as quickly as they can and answer your questions. So if there are no more questions, um, thank you again for attending today's webinar. We hope it was informative. Um, as Helen said, we've got another one on Thursday for our sixth form, and you're very welcome at that. Um, we'll post the recording for this webinar as soon as we can on our website, so you can refer back to it on anything that you need to just um, refresh your memory on. Um, thank you to the panel. Simon, yeah, I'm sorry you dipped in and out, but uh, I think we wore your voice out at times. Um, and thank you very much. Um, good night.